The iPhone 12 rumors are heating up. What's it gonna look like? How much is it gonna cost? And will it arrive on time? We're answering all those questions. Let's start with the design. Those of you itching for a new look from the iPhone will get it in the iPhone 12. According to the rumors, it will take a page from the iPad Pro handbook and have those flatter edges, slimmer form factor, 40% slimmer bezels and a reduced notch. So sadly the notch will still be there, but it'll be about a third smaller. Like its predecessors, the iPhone 12 will be available in three different sizes, but the sizing will actually be different. And this time around there will be four models. So bear with me, I'm going to explain it to you, starting with the most high-end option, iPhone 12 Pro Max. Now this iPhone is apparently going to grow from the current 6.5 inch display to a larger 6.7 inch display. However, the actual footprint of the phone won't increase by too much because of those smaller bezels. It will also have a different camera array on the back. So still that square module, still the telephoto wide angle and ultra wide angle lenses, except this time around, it will also add a LiDAR sensor, which I will explain later. Now the other pro model will be a 6.1 one inch display, also OLED, and it will still have that same four module camera array on the back. And then you have another 6.1 inch iPhone model. This one will just be the iPhone 12, no pro. And this one would actually have two different camera sensors on the back, the wide angle and the ultra wide angle and no LiDAR sensor and no telephoto lens. And on the bottom end, you'll have a 5.4 inch display. So remember the smallest size currently of the regular iPhone line is 5.8 inches. So it will be reduced in size, although still not quite as small as the current iPhone SE, which Apple just launched. So a nice little array of sizes. That last model that I mentioned would also only have those two different camera sensors on the back and would not be a pro model. So you'll have a lot more options to choose from. Now in terms of specs, we can expect the same incremental upgrades that we see every year. I'm talking about faster processor, in this case the A14 chip, better battery life, perhaps a faster refresh for the screen with the ability to switch from 60 to 120 Hertz. So as not to drain the battery life as suggested by everything Apple Pro. And better features on the camera, I'm at least hoping for a portrait mode video on the next iPhone that remains to be seen and maybe a couple other features. One of those rumors that may not pan out, but I'll still throw it out there is the fact that Apple may bring back the Touch ID behind the screen. There's rumors that at least one of those iPhones will have this feature, but again, it's less likely. The second one of these features is the fact that Apple would be eliminating the lightning port and making everything completely wireless on this phone. Again, uh, that's less likely, but you never know. And most importantly, they're rumored to be 5G ready. And that's not to say that all of them will, but at least the higher end models of the iPhone 12 will have 5G connectivity. And now let's talk about the price because for once, this one's actually the good news. Remember that smaller iPhone 12 with a 5.4 inch screen that I mentioned in the beginning? Well, according to Apple blogger John Proser, this one will actually cost $650. That's less than the cheapest iPhone 11 right now. Now the next step up from that with the iPhone 12 with that 6.1 inch screen would be $750. Now, once you get into the pro models, it would bump up the price. The cheapest pro model with that 6.1 inch screen would cost $1,000. And then the pro max would cost $1,100, which is the same as the current max. So not bad overall. We're just seeing this trend of Apple offering more in terms of pricing, in terms of sizes, in terms of features. And I, for one, I'm happy with this. You also have that iPhone SE, which Apple just launched, which comes at a much lower price of $400. The other bit of good news is that they may include more storage space. According to Apple leaker John Proser, they would start at 128 gigs across the board with the pro versions going up to 512 gigs. 
But one of the biggest unknowns this year is the release date. This is something that in years past is pretty straightforward. Apple has an event in September and then launches the phone a couple weeks later. But this time around, because of that pandemic, we have no idea when the iPhone 12 may be coming. A recent Wall Street Journal report says that Apple is roughly a month late on production for the iPhone 12, but Apple hasn't really said anything officially, so I wouldn't put it past them to kind of catch up on time and still release it on time. But even if the worst case scenario pans out, as the Wall Street Journal suggests, and Apple has to release this uh, if iPhone 12 in October, to me that wouldn't be the end of the world. I think with everything going on, we almost expect certain delays uh, in terms of production. Also, it wouldn't be the first time that Apple delays an iPhone. If you remember, the iPhone 10 was delayed as well as the iPhone 10R. So not a first for Apple. To me, not a big deal, but what do you guys think? Now, let me just say that these are still rumors and with everything going on, a lot could change from here until September or October or whenever it is that Apple releases the iPhone 12. But in the meantime, you can always come back here because I will continue giving you all the latest updates as I get them. And please stay safe out there. Till next time.